from Relay FM. This is Upgrade, episode 500. 500. It is February 19th, 2024. Today's show is brought to you by Vitaly, Delete Me, and Ladder. My name is Mike Hurley, and I am joined by a man who's been on 499 of these 500 episodes. Jason Snell. Hi, Jason. It might be 498, but most, oh, most of them. Hi. You missed two? Hi. I thought it was just mm. one. A year ago, I think I missed both of those episodes when I went to New Zealand. You I think did. Those I made I you take both amazed. of them off. Yes, 498. You did. You did. I've been on less. Ago. I've probably been on like 470 or something like yeah. that. I'm sure I'm sure one of our, our uh, many uh, official historians will tell us at some point what, what that is. But um, I just want to point out that... Uh, a little quirk of Roman numerals. Um, they have a numeral for 500, which okay. I think is funny. Like, you don't need that, but they, they have it. And what it's is it? D. So it oh, is D. upgrade D. Today, nope. I'm not, you know what? I'm and just and we're doing a bother. report card, so upgrade D yeah, below I'm not average. Gonna, <laughs> upgrade D. That's that, I've been hearing a lot of these things upgrade recently. D. Oh, it's right? like letterbox D. It's yeah. one of those like, yeah, background tasks upgrade that D. you do. It's a upgrade demon. D. And this also, the upgrade, demon episode. upgrade yeah. D is upgraded. Which is sure. also fun. Uh, upgraded. Yeah, it is. Yeah, Great. Upgraded. I love it. Upgraded. Welcome to Upgraded. Upgraded. I have a snow talk question for you to start okay. this 500th episode. comes from Ben. Ben wants to know, do the two of you do anything in particular to keep your relationship fresh and positive? I mm. marvel every week at a mix of fun banter, professional analysis, and what seems like a true warm friendship with no apparent tension after all of these years. <laughs> well... <laughs> So I want to just start this off before you actually answer with like one of the things that like broke my heart as a younger man was finding out that the Mythbusters guys didn't really get on very well. Like they had a, like, a good professional relationship, but that was where it like ended. Like they were not friends and they would say that they were not friends. And like, and when I found that out, it like kind of broke my heart a little bit. Right. And so I'm here to say we're not friends. no. That's right. That's how we keep it. That's how we keep it uh, solid. Is never speak outside the podcast, mm-hmm. which is also not true. We talk <laughs> all true. the time. We do. Uh, uh, well, this is a snail talk question, so you will get the ability to answer first. But I have something okay. to say about this also. Oh, I, I mean, I, I don't even know what to say about this. We, yeah, we're we're friends, and um, I, I think it would be different. I mean, you're very far away, mm-hmm. um, so I only get to see you in person every so often, and we we, but we have like so many people do you know we have slack conversations and like there, there's a, always a back and forth um i think uh i think we get along i i i don't i don't i don't even know how to say it like i i don't <laughs> i'll put it this way mike because we as we barrel toward 10 years of doing this yep. um it's not work to stay connected to mike it's just i mean it's just oh nice it's i'm not there's no strategies involved to keep it fresh it just is good that's what i say i'm yeah. sorry it's a, kind of a non-answer it's like no well that I, that that yeah. warmed my heart that was your gift to me on this, yeah. this 500th episode it is. i give Look, that to you uh, what i'll say is i couldn't imagine doing the show with literally anybody else this is the only person i've wanted to show with is you like you know we are a great partnership um we work very well together we complement each other in the right ways mm-hmm. um Look, to say that we never get annoyed at each other would be wrong. You know what I oh, mean? No. Like we get frustr- You hear us but get frustrated at each other on yeah. the episode sometimes. On the episodes, like, yeah. But, but we're professionals fine. as well as friends. And I think that yeah. that combination can allow you to work together for this period of time. You know? We might say some of this again if we talk about this uh, coming up in September when it's 10 years of doing this. But I'll just say um, now that I also r- always appreciate the fact that when I uh, was leaving my <clears throat> leaving my job, of many many years and uh, wanted to do a podcast it was like one of my primary goals was like well when i leave my job one of the things i'm going to need to do is do a podcast um and i need a partner for that and i wanted it to be you and you already had connected <laughs> and we're starting this network and all those things and um so once again i will say also thank you for agreeing to do this podcast because logically i think you p- could have said it's one too many podcasts and you didn't so thank you for that <laughs> i wasn't going to turn that opportunity down and i feel like it was just a thing it was just a work it was just like a way and i think this has become better and better over time of how we split this show is like different to all the other shows i do the things that you do like it is different it's its own thing and mm. i also think different to most of the other stuff that's out there 
Of course, you're going to have to deal with a little bit of this today. It is our 500 episode, so we're going to be a bit navel gazing. But we have some big topics to talk about. Thank you so much to Ben for sending in that lovely Snow Talk question. Mm-hmm. I've been sitting on that one for a little while because I thought it would be oh, good for an episode nice. like this. Some follow-up. So uh, on last week's episode, you said you were going to stuff your Vision Pro into a backpack and cover it with some T-shirts, and I just wanted to know how that <laughs> went for you. Don't, for, don't forget the socks. Uh-huh. The answer is, uh, after that episode, I thought that it was a stupid idea, but but my uh, inherent cheapness kicked in, right? Which is like, I didn't want to buy an expensive bag. And... Um, so what I ended up doing is buying a super cheap bag the, or a super cheap case, the one that Casey List bought. Ah, the Casey case. Casey bought it, and and it's it's you know it's like twenty five dollar case or whatever. It's it's not a hundred or two hundred or three hundred dollar case, and he said it's perfectly adequate. And I, I mean it's clearly a uh, MetaQuest case, <laughs> but uh, it it works, and it, all the pieces are Velcro, so you can kind of like move it around and get the dimensions to be a little bit close. So that's what I traveled with. Is I did put it in a in a dumb case that fits in my backpack and was not stuffing socks around the eye holes which is what i i realized after we talked that that was probably a stupid idea i'm so happy you got something (laughs) you know i I saw casey's case because me and casey got to spend some time together in new york he came and surprised me which was wonderful good friend see he's He's a good good friend friend. he came all that way just he's a good friend he's a good friend and he had that case and i was like what are you doing (laughs) i just like just get the get the case but to be honest Review, I'm just happy you had a case. Uh, Bill wrote in That's what I was going for. Baseline. Anything. Just just any case. Yes. Uh, Bill wrote in uh, to say, hey, Jason, there's a company in San Francisco. I'm sure you know them. Waterfield Bags. Waterfield. And they make a case of their own. SF Bags. So this case, I saw people, I saw this reference as like a cheaper option. It's still not cheap. It's like still $180. Yeah. But what looks cool about this case is it is much smaller physically much smaller. than apples mm-hmm. yeah. um so if that's what you're looking for yeah. then it looks good great. and i have some of their i i've used some of their stuff over over the years and yeah. it's very high quality it's good stuff they sold out immediately yes of course when they announced this product so it wasn't really an option for me i did think about it if they had been available i might have bought one but um it's not too uh, bad like if you order it now it ships middle of march so you yeah, know, well, that's good. Maybe but for the, the um, for this trip, I, I just thought the Casey case is good in the sense that it exists and was cheap. Yeah. And if and I really felt like, well, first off, I got Casey to say it's fine, um, and then I thought, well, I'll take a flyer on it. Casey says it's fine, and um, if you know if it doesn't work out. I can just get something else because it was relatively cheap. But what I didn't want to do, and you know that Apple case, I know people love it. I, I looked at it and I'm like, I, I saw one in person a couple of times, and it, it just doesn't do it for me. It doesn't do it for me. And everybody else, everybody can be different. So I'm happy to have my little cheap thing that I can put it in, so it doesn't rattle around and have like, I don't know, chocolate melt on it or something, <laughs> right? Like it's fine. It's good. It, it's it's enough for now. Jonathan wrote in to say, I feel most of the questions in the segment talking about Vision Pro sizing are answered well enough by Apple in a documentation that they put together, including the question of when should I use the other cushion and specific fit issues that are fixed for specific adjustment changes or light seal or light seal cushions and even what the markings mean and what to look for. So Apple put together a knowledge base article about fitment of the Vision Pro because we were talking about that. And there's Mm -hmm. some stuff in here that is useful for sure. Um, but one of the things that I find frustrating about this article is they're referencing the fact that like, maybe you should, if something doesn't fit right, you should get a different piece, right? Like maybe a different light seal or something, but that's just not a thing you can do. You can't just do that. You will, you can only buy the ones that Apple will let you buy. And like, I'll say again, like I'm here. Hi, my name is Mike Hurley and I'm here again with, with like everybody else with another, like. Uh, just personal experience thing that happened to me. So um, uh-huh. I have two light seals. Um, I think I got like a 21 and a 25. Yeah. The 21 was what I was just when I I bought the thing. And when I bought, I bought, my, I put my order in and I put my prescription lens order in separately. And when I did that, it was like, Hey, you're going to need a 25 for this. And the reason is I read about it. Some people, or in some instances, if you have lenses, they recommend a different light seal for distance. Mm. Today, I thought I would try the original one, the smaller one, I guess, the 21, with my lenses in, and I actually find it more comfortable. 
Interesting. Like, so, and also I have less of the tunnel vision thing. Cause it's yeah, right. Cause that's the idea is you get a little closer. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, my feedback to Jonathan is, is, I mean, it's great that they have documentation, but that doesn't help you if you don't have the sizes because what you, what you need to do is try them on. I can read lots of documentation about like how, you know, how like if you're online and you want to buy, let's say a hat, but it could be anything, pants, a shirt. And they have a little thing that says size information and you click on it and they're like, oh, um, it's this many inches or millimeters or centimeters or whatever you want miles um, around. (laughs) And I think to myself, okay, I don't know my measurement. I don't know where that measurement is taken. Uh, I don't know how to do it properly. And what you really want to do is try on a bunch of different hats. Or t-shirts yep. and find the one that fits. Yep. And if you're at an Apple store where they theoretically have every size, the people at the Apple store should be pretty well trained to bring them all out and step you through it and figure out which one fits and ask you the right questions. And that's my complaint is that I don't think that they've been well trained in that at all mm-hmm. <laughs> and that they need to be better at that. And I think it's the fault of, of people in Apple retail for focusing on the demo experience and not focusing on the fit experience. And I think it's uh, that's why it's frustrating. I went to my... Uh, local Apple store, um, they didn't have the 21. I ended up, uh, and, and this is the other thing I think I mentioned is you you can't just order the other size. You have if you're doing a swap, you have to actually go through a, a series of questions, uh, which you can game to get the one that you want. Anyway, I ended up with a uh, what is it, 15, 14, the the one that's one, believe it or not, one size down from the 21, and I got that, and it was terrible. It was uh, put huh. all the pressure on my cheekbones. Um, much worse experience than my the 25 that I originally got. So I actually went back to the 25, and I'm going to send the 20, the 15 back because it's it doesn't fit. But it, this is silly. Um, it, it's silly. The, my, when I was in the Apple Store, they should have been able to walk me through multiple ones, and instead they just sort of like took one and said, "How's this different?" And I went, "I don't know. I can't tell." And they're like, "Well, all right, maybe you can get that one." And that was the end of it. So yeah. it's just it was really lacking. I appreciate that there's documentation. I mentioned Apple Store employees also got uh, got a bunch of tips about sizing, but it doesn't feel like they've been trained in like here's how you do it. And and instead, like I distinctly got the impression that they were kind of making it up. And I would and again frustrating that they're supposed to be the experts but i was driving it and yeah. I, I i didn't feel like that was how that was supposed to go and that I, I would have had to be like no 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 bring me more light seals i want to try all the light seals i didn't want to be that guy yeah i feel like this is one of those things where it will get better over time right but like it is just a point of saying that like right now it is like a little bit of a black box you like zach pointed out something in in the chat that i didn't know uh, the, you can order different light seals online, but you need to know what number. Yeah. You've got to know the number, right? You've got to like, know the number. How do you yeah. know? And like, it, it's because then you end up with these scenarios, which I've already seen some of this stuff where like there are these Reddit, Reddit threads. It's like, we got the perfect one. So well, that stuff doesn't work like that either, right? Because no. people are different sizes. And that's why <laughs> that's this right. is complicated. We finally found the right size for the one head that everybody yes. on Reddit has. Yep. <laughs> it's like, so, no, that's not. That's not no, how it works. Isn't it, 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 that isn't it. Anyway, I appreciate Jonathan's link to the support. I, I appreciate that somebody in Apple document. Here's the thing. People in Apple documentation obviously felt that this was an issue that needed to be documented. Yep. However, at the store, the experience that at least I had was not uh, as good mm-hmm. as that. As we said last week, and I feel like I'm going to keep saying this, the Vision Pro is like the most your mileage may vary product that has it maybe is. ever existed. It's like a, it's like a Rorschach test uh-huh. because literally everybody sees something different because everybody has a different... I mean, I mean, you know this. You've seen some of the discourse about this. It's not just that like our heads are different sizes and our faces are different shapes, but it is that... Not and it's not just that our eyes have different things about them that require adjustment. It's also that like our brains process visual stimulus differently. Like different people process it differently. It's yes, it's the most one you know uh, your mileage may vary product Apple has ever made for sure. John wrote in to say Jason mentioned that personas on the Vision Pro could have the benefit of not having to do your makeup to be as presentable as your usual self on a video call. But unfortunately for me, this is disappointingly untrue. I scan myself wearing my fairly typical makeup, including eyeshadow and non-natural color purple, uh, in a non-natural color purple, and the persona doesn't include it at all. Maybe the cameras are taking a depth map and applying a skin color as a skin. This is interesting to me because my persona has accurate blemishes 
on my skin. So why wouldn't it capture makeup? Like I find that to be peculiar. I, I would wonder, like to know from. I more wonder if it's because the eyes are animated and therefore the eyes are more generic. Like if there's a part mm. of your core, <laughs> your your uh, what is this product driven us to, Mike? I'm about. To, I'm just gonna say it. So part of your like core face, your your central <laughs> face. <laughs> is um, is is more accurately rendered, and then that things that are more peripheral or more animated or not. I don't know. Because it, we did see that, that your eyes Jana, cause I'm didn't surprised. look correct, right? Like that that there was something going on, but it wasn't what actually goes on in your eyes. Well, like you, we I mean, what you said is is it looked like one of my eyes was a different color, and I yeah. get that a lot. It, it 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 is maybe slightly, but a lot mostly it's optical illusion because one of my pupils is bigger than the other. Some of the time, not all the time. If I make a new persona, what I need to do is get the light exactly right so that my pupils are equal sizes, and then we won't have this conversation. <laughs> but yeah, it, it represented it. I don't know if it represented it entirely accurately, but it did represent it in a way. Um, but this is a good question, right? Like, do, does it have uh, things like the color of the eyeshadow? Does it say, uh, I'm not going to render that? If you've got eyeliner, does it render the eyeliner? I, I mentioned this before. I have a friend who. Um, when she's on a Zoom, she uses, believe it or not, Zoom has this feature. Zoom has a virtual eyebrows feature. <laughs> True story. And you can just add eyebrows <laughs> in Zoom. And uh, like, uh, so th there's Wait. lots of ways you can approach this. I but Apple. Can I ask know. some questions about this? You, maybe you can answer. I can't answer them. Does this friend Certainly. have no eyebrows? Uh, I think she's unhappy with her eyebrows, and right. so Zoom replaces so it, them like, with it other eyebrows. So it puts new eyebrows on top of your existing eyebrows, where I otherwise so. you might I do makeup or something. Works. Okay, exactly. I, 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 this I don't know. this anyway, feature they, in Zoom is just for eyebrows, like nothing else. I don't know. I, hmm. It's one of those things where it's like an overlay. It's like an Instagram, a touch up or thing, like a okay. like a Snapchat filter kind okay. of thing. I don't know. Eyebrows. It's virtual eyebrows. I didn't How get that it. How do they work? It's how do they work? So um, this is a great data point for Jenna, and I really do wonder like what gets picked up. And is it that uh, she mentioned non-natural color, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe there's something about that where um, there are blemishes and things that they will try to do, especially if it's in your central face. My central but, face. My blemishes um, are on my central face. So but if you're in a, it's part of your peripheral face, and it's also a non-natural color, maybe <laughs> that they just drop that. What, what, language? what are we talking about at this point, you know? Central face, peripheral face. Yeah, that's right. It's Anime more, more of a suburb of your face. It's an, a, a face Jason, edge. we need we need to eject from the Apple Vision Pro follow-up and go into the Please. land of sensibility. Welcome back to DMA Today. Today. Everybody's so excited about DMA Today, where we try oh, and make sense of what's mm -hmm. going on with the DMA Today. And so the way that DMA Today has gone so far is how it's going to continue. I'm going to read some feedback about the core technology fee in this very slow argument and debate we're right. having with our audience, which I love. And then I have some news Great. for you. Daniel writes in to say regarding the core technology fee, I think the main problem referring to apps never having been built for the App Store and therefore nothing has changed is that part of my reading on the DMA is, is it supposed to clamp down on Apple's monopoly on deciding who or what can be on your phone as opposed to it only being about the money. With this logic, Apple has made sure that a whole bunch of apps can realistically never be on the platform anyway. I, After last week where I, where I pushed back on listeners, I'm just going to say, Daniel, I agree. Thank you for your feedback. I do, but like... You know, where I feel like we're getting to the core of it, and this is the core of the core. This is a like a good point, right? That it's like yeah. if these are apps, this is supposed to be a situation where apps that couldn't exist before can exist, but they still can't exist because they can't afford to exist. Right. However, I, I think it goes. It gets to the question, which I think is a question that we can argue about the legal points and the details of it and all of that. But I think sometimes what you have to do is say what was the intended purpose of all of this? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and did that happen? And that, that I think, is is uh, worth uh, considering. Got a good uh, point from Mathouse, who says, for open source apps that do not intend to make any money, they could publish through a charity. There are multiple mm. existing open source charities that could publish open source apps. Since the code is open source, anyone can publish it, and charities do not pay the technology fee. Love it. That's and good. Matt yeah, I think nonprofits and educational institutions don't pay the technology fee. So, I, I mean, a charity, 
I, I, I think it's nonprofits as yeah. well. So, so you lit- literally a nonprofit for open source iPhone apps would not pay the CTF. And that could create an open source store. Like that could be a way around it. And right. Matt writes I suppose in, so, yeah. And Matt writes in to say, regarding the core technology fee, maybe this should not apply if Apple has rejected an application. The developer gave Apple the opportunity to have the app in their app store, but then they chose not to have it. It seems fair that they should then not ch- then they should not be able to make any money from it. I love this thought. Love it, love it. Right? If you said Somebody you don't want the, it, uh, then you shouldn't make anything. You said yeah, you don't get, want it. You want nothing to do with it. Get Europe on the phone. That's a good one. Yeah, mm-hmm. lo- love it, love it. Now we move into the news portion. Microsoft okay. Gaming CEO Phil Spencer says that Microsoft will not bring Game Pass to iOS as they feel that they cannot effectively monetize it with Apple's rules. This is a quote. I'm a big fan of how Windows works. And you've got a Microsoft <laughs> store on sure. Windows. You've got Steam. You've got the Epic Game Store. You've got GOG. You have alternatives. And I think alternative ways for people to buy things creates goodness for consumers and creators. I think the largest platform for gamers, which is mobile, should have the same. Basically... Microsoft don't want to give Apple any money. I don't think it matters Mm -hmm. what they do. They don't want to give them anything. I've seen some point out that it's ironic that Microsoft don't do this with Xbox. Um, But I do think this comes back to that age-old question of how you define what an iPhone is. And I do not think that an iPhone is in the same category as a games console, personally. I think it's in the same category as a PC or a Mac. Mm. Uh, but your again, your mileage may vary. Your mileage you may think. vary wherever yeah. it hits you on your general face area. Indeed. Um, <laughs> your I think, I think, um, I mean, I was thinking about this the other day. I think it's fair to say, I was actually thinking about this while I was listening to last, last week's episode of Connected, where you guys were talking about the post-PC era mm-hmm. and how we're in it in the sense that there's not going to be a new PC made. Like yep. we have PCs, but like they're, nobody's going to say, "Oh, we got a new device that's a PC." And what I was thinking about is, really, what you're saying is, we're, we, we, in the infancy of computers, we created these computers that were general use, general purpose computers, where the idea was they can do whatever. We don't know what they're for. Just program them to do whatever, and they'll do that. And the way that the iPhone and the iPad and other devices like that are like game consoles is in the sense that they're not general purpose in the sense that they are more controlled and more focused and they're not mm-hmm. sort of like you can just do whatever it's wide open. Um, Apple has chosen to build those platforms and I really most stuff now is much more kind of like lockdown. So in that way, I think it is like it. I don't think it's the same as it. And I, I, I'm going to reserve a little bit of judgment for Phil Spencer talking about Windows and not talking about how it works on Xbox because I yeah. do think that he's talking out of is it both sides of his mouth? I don't know. I, I think, I do it think is. it's kind of it's kind of rich that he talks about openness when he's got a platform yep. that's closed and locked down. Uh, but at the same time, it doesn't mean that he's not making some decent points. I completely agree. Right, like there is some irony there, but it comes back to that question, <laughs> sure. right? That like how I I think at, at the point now where it seems like basically every device or platform is locked down to some degree, right? If we are yeah. in the post PC era. Except for Mac and Windows, yeah. You've got to look you know, at or whatever, yeah. what is the purpose of the device, I think, a little bit more. Exactly. Yeah. Right? What what is the it's not general purpose, then what is it? <laughs> so like I think yeah. yeah. If you just do one thing, then you're maybe a little bit more like the specific. But if you mm-hmm. purport to do lots of different things and you're trying to fill lots of different areas and you're creating a more open in theory, platform, not right. n- open. Yeah, yeah, in right. The open. way you define it uh, also defines sort of how you should be judged by it. Anyway, my, my thought here is mostly that I'm disappointed by this, that Microsoft has decided not to do this because Apple did change the rules and it feels like Microsoft was headed there and then Apple said it's against the rules. Now Apple has said is it is okay and Microsoft says, yeah. well, no. We're what not I don't do understand also- is why Microsoft are not bringing Game Pass and just not putting the ability for people to sign up. Why is can't they just make a reader yeah, app? I, I'm pretty I, sure they can make a reader app, right? And I think that was what they were thinking of doing before. And I don't know. I I find it frustrating because this this feels like it's not. First off, a lot of this is getting conflated with a DMA, and it's not the same. It's a, it, that's a different conversation. But um, even though we put it in DMA today, sorry everybody. But it's well, <laughs> I mean, right he is also in the quote. Like I took a bit. He is talking about the DMA. 
Right. So this is the challenge is there's the DMA, which they're against, but the global allowance of game streaming services on iOS is not the DMA. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing where I feel like Microsoft could just do that. And um, I hope they reconsider at some point because... Um, Honestly, I, I see this as everyone. a similar thing to Mark Zuckerberg last week where everybody's making a lot of points right now because they're trying to yeah. get the EU to force Apple to go further. To uh, do more. Yeah. yeah, I agree. As mentioned previously, Epic are going to be bringing the Epic Game Store to iOS in Europe, but they needed something pretty important to do that, which was an Apple developer account because theirs mm -hmm. was taken away. Right. Apple have reinstated Epic's developer account for the App Store, so they will be yeah. able to bring the Epic Game Store and Fortnite to iOS in the European Union in the I don't know distant if, future. I'm not sure if technically they reinstated that account, but they, they have a subsidiary that is in Sweden. Yeah. That is going to be their European publisher for their store and Fortnite in the EU, and that's part of the rules of the of the uh, of the European. Uh, influenced app store mm -hmm. environment whatever we want to call it is if you're an entity in the eu you run you can run these alternative app marketplaces so they yep. have taken their swedish entity um and they're going to use that to do i think this. it is a reinstatement in spirit because okay. i reckon spirit, if epic certainly. tried to set up an account before now apple would have not let them because yeah, I think they could have right. just kept doing that i think that's right but I, I technically i think it may be a new account but mm -hmm. yes in spirit it is that the European Commission has determined that iMessage is not a dominant enough platform to be regulated under the DMA. This was something <laughs> that needed to be set up, and that's the case. However, there is a... This isn't DMA-related, but it's Europe-related, so it's also in this uh, category. The European mm. Commission has issued a 500 million euro fine to Apple for working anti-competitively against Spotify for Apple Music. This is the result of a complaint filed by Spotify in 2019. I'm going to read from 9to5Mac. Specifically, the EU believes Apple acted illegally in blocking music streaming apps like Spotify from telling customers about other ways to subscribe to their services and thereby evade Apple's commission on in-app purchases. They are usually referred to as the App Store's anti-steering provisions. The forthcoming EU judgment will not force Apple to permit alternate alternative in-app payment methods, but it will insist music streaming app developers can freely link out to their website to subscribe online. So the expectation is that this is more than the reader app rule, which is just one link, right, that the right. European Union is going to save for music streaming services, specifically because that's what this case is for. You need to allow them to put links basically wherever they want. Oh, and also you've got to give Spotify half a billion dollars a euros. Yeah, yeah. I mean, is, this is this is one of the things that I've always found the most offensive about Apple's practices is mm -hmm. when they set up, all, like there are places where they're like, we're just gardening our platform, we're tending to to our users' needs. It's the moments when they're like, oh, but also we're going to make our own music service or we're going to make our own bookstore and their bookstore doesn't have to play by the rules <laughs> that all the other bookstores do. That's what really bothers me. And we're going to price get, it the same. Yeah. But we essentially make 30% more money than they can make. Than they could possibly make. Yeah. And therefore, they can never come into our platform, and we're the only ones who can, uh, you know, who can have this business model on our on our platform. And that that's the stuff that really irks me. Yep. So, I mean, 500 million euros is not going to hurt them, really, at but all. But it is a lot of money. Still, it is a lot of money. Yeah. But yes, to Apple, not a lot, but they also don't want to pay it. <laughs> but, well, there you go. That's, of course they don't. That's what you get. This episode is brought to you by Vitaly. Customer success teams today are facing a problem. How do they connect customer data back to their work? Vitaly changes that. It is a new kind of customer success platform, an all-in-one collaborative workspace that combines your customer data with all the capabilities you expect from today's project management and work platforms. Because it's designed for today's customer success team, that is why Vitaly operates with unparalleled efficiency, improves net revenue retention, and delivers best-in-class customer experiences. It's it's a solution to helping your customer success team keep a better pulse on your customers, which maximizes productivity, visibility, and collaboration. You can boost your bottom line by driving more revenue per customer with Vitaly. And if you take a qualified demo of Vitaly, you'll get a free pair of AirPods Pro. 
So if you're a customer success decision maker actively seeking CS solutions, working at a B2B software as a service company with 50 to 1,000 employees, and you're willing to explore changing customer success platforms if you have one in place, schedule your call today by visiting vitally.io slash upgrade and you'll get a free pair of AirPods Pro. That's V-I-T-A-L-L-Y dot I-O, vitally dot I-O slash upgrade for a free pair of AirPods Pro if you schedule a qualified meeting. Our thanks to Vitally for their support of this show and Relay FM. It's draft time. We're doing a draft oh. today. Woo! People, we love are they surprised? Did they know? They, did they know? It's like, what, what did Apple, is Apple doing an event? No, it's not that kind of draft. It's a people. draft of our own. So... Uh, For the last few years, every 100 episodes, we make a set of predictions for Mm -hmm. 100 episodes from now. So we started Mm -hmm. this with episode 300 in 2020, and we've done it again for episode 400, and here we are for episode 500. So we're going to do two things today. The draft of the ages. The draft of the ages. We're going to look back our predictions from episode 400. We're going to grade them, and then we're going to look at our predictions well then we're going to set some predictions for episode yes. 600, 600. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's go through these so all right we'll do round one you said an imac larger than 24 inches will exist don't you like my optimism mm-hmm. but it's not true it didn't happen it didn't happen in fact there was a press release <laughs> <laughs> there was, this one really was didn't happen it's not happening jason uh-huh. said uh unattributed apple executive uh then mine was an apple car will not exist that's one point i don't appreciate me. your lack of optimism <laughs> you are correct <laughs> you said apple tv plus broadcasts another live sport that is not baseball mls oh baby an entire league not just a sport mm, they got all yeah. of it they got all of it and then I can't believe this one didn't happen. My second pick was Apple TV Plus will include live programming that is not sports. I was really no. surprised that they didn't do like a Christmas special or something. I thought I know, it would have right? happened. Round three, you said an iPad will have a display larger than 12.9 inches. So you close, know, like I'm I a think. Month, I'm a month away from this. Yeah, you're so close. So close. A month away. Month Maybe away. if we if we wouldn't, uh, you know, we've definitely done some bonus episodes over the last couple of years, right? Mm-hmm. Where like drafts have happened and stuff. If those wouldn't have happened, you might have actually gotten this one. I think I think I might have gotten four out of five. <laughs> if <laughs> if it was oh, at the, yeah, end, of, you know what? At the right. end of March, <laughs> at the end, of, we'll get to it. But like, I think I would have gotten four out of five <laughs> if this was the end of March. But it's not. <laughs> Yet, <laughs> so really, we you were every actually ten episodes. All right, let's let's go through these because then I want to talk about this for a second. All right, all right. Uh, I said two more Apple hardware products will be called Studio. That didn't happen. No, didn't. Happen. I was really I love your idea though. Really excited about Studio, but nothing yeah. else happened. Nope. Uh, round four. Somewhere in the uh, world, Apple will allow users to sideload iOS apps. Okay, so. <laughs> This is so close to so being close. <laughs> because okay, first off, um, there's the will allow, and um, as you pointed out to me when we were talking about this, technically it hasn't happened yet. Yep. <laughs> it happens in a couple of weeks. Uh-huh. And second, I use the word sideload, side which is not technically no, what's that, going to happen. No, this because specifically it's be is not sideloading. <laughs> alternative app stores, <laughs> but like. But honestly, if I had said a- allow alternative app stores, I would still not get it because it hasn't happened it yet. It hasn't happened. Heartbra- this is this oh. is so heartbreaking. Uh, WWDC has not returned to its pre-W, uh, pre-2020 style, which is Correct. true. Absolutely, you that it, was yours. And Apple Watch gets a new design. Apple Watch Ultra, baby. <laughs> which is, yes, it was the Apple Watch Ultra. And I uh-huh. said external display support for iPad won't happen. It happened. It happened. So that puts us at 2-2. Two, 2-2. Two. Two, two. <laughs> Where if this no was breaker. three weeks, four weeks from now, it would probably it, it, be 4-2 to you. Yeah, at least 3-2. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We could have so, debated sideload, but it wouldn't have mattered, right? Because yep. there'll be a 13-inch iPad Pro or something, mm-hmm. and that'll be enough. Even though, I will say, that was not my intent, right? Like, those two picks, your studio and my 12.9 inches, was both of us dreaming a 15-inch iPad studio. We were dreaming Which, that. I mean, it, it still might happen. happen. Still we might don't happen. know. Like, you it know. could still happen. 
but it didn't. Not, I will not say, today. Not on February nineteenth, twenty twenty four, when episode five hundred happens, and that's the point of it is it's every hundred episodes. So we're we, it's we're dealing with what will happen in slightly less than two years from now. Ooh, and I I just missed it. I will say like I was because we're gonna make make our picks again in a minute. There is something really weird about two years from now because it's. It's in the future, but it's not that far away. Not like, it's far. actually pretty yeah. hard to make predictions for a two-year mm-hmm. span. Like, five right, years is easy. One year is easy. Two years? Right. Hard. Because you, you get run away with future, and then you're like, but wait, it's just two years from now. Yeah. <laughs> Magical things can't. Like, Apple Car will ship. And like, mm, probably not in two years. Probably, probably not. not. So, uh, congratulations to us. We drew. Yes, two, two. <laughs> we drew. We drew. So uh, let's. Uh, we've. I know we both got a bunch. So let's start off by saying we'll do five rounds. Okay. Uh, and I think we're gonna have to flip a coin to decide who goes first. No, I want. I want you to go first. Oh, okay. You're the existing champion and and uh, of the regular draft, and and this one had no winner, so I'm gonna let you go first, and that that way I can I can. Uh, I could have more time to think what I'm going to pick. <laughs> All right. My first one is boring. Tim Cook is still CEO of Apple. Oh, you know, I, I think in Upgrade Plus, we'll talk about what we didn't what we didn't pick. But um, I have some Tim Cook ones that are not that. Oh. Tim Cook is still CEO of Apple. I Again, I'm going to admire your optimism there. I think. Good for you. This is the two year thing, right? Two year. Mm-hmm. I, I know. Think that he's not going anywhere for a longer period of time than that. But I don't know. I don't know. Um, I um. Okay, now I gotta choose one. What do I think? Um. I'm gonna say. Okay, I got one for you. This is too good not to pick, so I'm gonna pick it. Apple apologizes for offensive or embarrassing content that was generated by an Apple AI <laughs> algorithm. <laughs> this is going to be Tim Cook sitting down in front of a sofa. It's like, <sighs> we're sorry. You know, like one of those, like they're going to get like a, we're sorry, YouTube it's a, video. It's going to be a gate. No, it'll no. It's going to be an unnamed uh, Apple source on background saying that they feel bad and that it's been corrected. <laughs> but still, I just Incredible. feel like right. They're about to unveil lots of AI stuff, and it's like, isn't it inevitable that something bad will happen and they'll apologize for it? I think it is. I love it. <laughs> You've already got more excited, more interesting than me because I get my next round. It's not particularly interesting. I All think right. within. Two years. This is why I lose all these drafts as I try to be entertaining. But, <laughs> okay, but, but I appreciate it. Revised Vision Pro hardware. Oh. I'm being again, specific. I have, I have a pick that says none. <laughs> I, I think two years-ish is mm-hmm. enough to see it's enough. a hardware revision. And I'm talking about the Vision Pro. I'm not yeah, saying yeah. like Vision or whatever. Like, But right. I think Vision within Air. that Vision. period, it will be enough time. There is like a thought of mine where I'm wondering how fast it will be until that revision happens. Like, I don't think they would do a year over year for this product, but for the first one, maybe they do, depending on, I don't know, right? Like, this is a conversation we'll have later on about how much they could realistically change or would want to change within a shorter period of time. But I think within the next 100 weeks, we'll see. Revised Vision Pro hardware. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go with a bummer pick and say one Apple Watch no longer fits. At least one Apple Watch no longer fits the classic Apple Watch bands. Mm, okay. I don't like it, but it feels like it might happen. I think it. I think this feels like something that has to happen at some point. Like I just. I'm not saying I want it, but I feel like it is an inevitability. They can't mm-hmm. keep that thing forever. Like it's at a certain point, it is going to limit the design of the Apple Watch, and as soon as that happens, they're going to have to change it. Yep. I'm going to go with an Apple Watch pick mm-hmm. and say that an an Apple Watch gets a glucose monitor. Ah, uh, that was on my list. That was on my list. That's a big uh, yeah yeah. That's good. That's a, I like how risky it is. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, see, now you're entertaining. Now you're entertaining. Me. I don't know if you're going to do it. But it's, it's the thing. They're going to make it happen. They're mm-hmm. going to do it. That's great. That's great. All right. I will see you, your glucose monitor, and raise you. Apple Card or Apple Cash will expand to at least one more country. <laughs> I think they need to find a partner first <laughs> for the I'm U.S. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I would like it. It's U.S. only. Yeah. It's still U.S. only. Oh, yeah. It's been years now. Come on, Apple. Um, I'm going to say for my fourth round pick, there is still no larger iMac. Okay. All right, taking my prediction from 100 episodes yep. ago and just extending it into the future. I don't think it's Now that happen. Apple has said that they're not going to do it, then you're saying, yeah, they're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. All right, okay, all right. Um, okay, I'm going to give you a Vision Pro pick that yeah. you're probably, I don't, I don't know, maybe you'll like it. It's, it's, it's broad. I, I tried to do something detailed here, and I decided I wanted to go broad with this, which is... Apple will release some new input device product designed for Vision OS. Oh, I like this. So it could be combo keyboard trackpad. It could be hand tracker. It could be thing you put on your wrist. I don't know. Something. What is the Apple Pencil for Vision Pro? Mm-hmm. Not that it's an Apple Pencil, but like... Maybe it's a pencil, just maybe, a regular pencil. Right? Like something right I would like, <laughs> I would like to be able to walk up to... Like so in um the the Horizon workrooms on the MetaQuest, mm-hmm. you can use the controller as like a pen to write on a fake whiteboard. Right. I would like to be able to do that with Freeform. Like Apple have this weird thing where they're trying to do it with hand tracking, but it's not very good. I would like right. to be able to use Freeform like a whiteboard and walk up to it with my pencil or whatever and just mm-hmm. draw on it. That would be so great. So this is my this is my thought. This is my thought process here is Apple chose to go with pure hand tracking. Pure hand tracking, as good as Apple's hand tracking is, and it is good, it has a lot of limits. The advantage of, I would say, optional hand accessories is precision. And there are certain, whether it's games or something like writing on a whiteboard, a little extra precision is nice. So whether it's, yes, a uh, an Apple Pencil or a, a little hand controller that you just put in your hand and then you can do it and then it's much more precise. I don't really know, but I, I just had this... I thought I think it's worth taking the chance of like maybe there's an accessory out there that that is an opportunity for them now that they've shipped the product and they're getting user feedback maybe there is something that they can do to improve the Vision OS experience over the next two years. Are we going to make this our final round? Um, we could, or we could go one more. I don't care. I got so many choices here. Let's do six. Mike. Let's do okay, six. Okay, we'll do six. Great. I'm going to I'm going to build on some of my picks from last time, some of our picks from mm-hmm. last time, but it, it, this is something that I think is going to happen at, s- at some point, so maybe it will happen in the next 2 years. Apple has another sport on TV Plus. Another sport. Like there were rumors about Formula 1. I I think Formula 1 still makes a lot of sense, but I think there is enough tumult in sport rights that at some point this is going to happen, mm-hmm. and I think Apple, they've shown their willingness for sport, right? They, they've they obviously done a lot with Vision Pro, uh, sorry, with uh, MLS, and so mm-hmm. I think, and for Vision Pro, right, they're going to want more stuff, so I, I think it could happen. Okay. I like it. Huh. Um, let's do... HomePod with a screen. How about oh. that? HomePod with a screen. Oh, I mean, you know, okay. if it's not called HomePod, we know what it is. We it's know what it is. We know what it is. It's gentleman's agreement here. HomePod I would with a like screen. that. Uh, all right, final weeks. pick. Okay. The iPhone Ultra is introduced. Ooh. So <laughs> that's it, huh? That's it. I mean, iPhone Ultra. I think that this that I think there is one more attempt at fixing the branding of the iPhone, right? That they've had mm-hmm. that issue with like the fourth iPhone. I think that there is a sense to be made for having four distinct iPhone models, 
right? And that might actually help them with their lineup a little bit more, right? So iPhone Plus Pro Ultra rather than this, like, they've got the two Pros, they have the regular iPhone, and then they have another one. So I think that this might give some consistency to the line, allow them to push up in price a little bit more. Ultra is a brand that they use. I think that it's obviously, and so I think this is going to happen, iPhone Ultra. All right, I like it. I'm going to go with, I started weirder than I'm ending, but I'm going to go with a new standalone display from Apple. Lovely. Something I would like that, that in a couple of weeks' or, time. I mean, new new or updated, but the idea that it's been so long, uh, they did it, like the, the the something else, update <laughs> something in the displays. They're so slow with displays, but I think it, if I give them 100 weeks, maybe they could give me one, maybe. would be nice. We will check back in about two years from now mm -hmm. and see just how well did we fare. <laughs> Join us in January of 2026. Days. Wow. Look forward to it, everyone. Mm -hmm. This episode is brought to you by Delete Me. Everybody wants to keep their personal information private. That's why it's uncomfortable to think about the fact that data brokers make their businesses selling people's data, especially if they're selling your data. The good news is all you have to do is contact these data brokers and tell them you want to have your information removed. You have the right to stay private. You have the right to protect your privacy. So you just have to call every single data broker or email every single data broker that's out there. Well, first you need to find out how many there are. Then you need to contact all of them to check that you're, if they've got your information on their system. And then if you find out that they do, just submit your request to be removed. That sounds like a lot of work, right? Like, how much time do you have to hunt down all of these data brokers that may or may not be selling your information? Well, this is where Delete Me comes in because they do it all for you. Delete Me helps you purge your personal information that has been captured by data brokers, like your name, your address, your age, your phone numbers, your email addresses, and they remove them from the source. You submit the information you want them to search for, and they take care of everything else. I've been very happy with my experience with Delete Me. I filled out one survey, told them a bunch of things about me and what the things that I want to be removed. I only needed to tell them the information that I wanted removed. And then every little while, every couple of months, I think, they send me a report. Hey, this is how it's going. We've removed you from these. We've got you in the process of these. We think it's going to take this long. It is just a great thing. Every time I get that report from Delete Me, it's like, oh, great. More of my information has been removed from places I don't want it to be. Such a simple service to have. It's going on in the background and keeping my information private. You can get 20% off your Delete Me plan when you go to joindeleteme.com slash upgrade20 and use the promo code upgrade20. The only way to get 20% off is to go to joindeleteme.com slash upgrade20 and enter the promo code upgrade20 at checkout. That is J-O-I-N-D-E-L-E-T-E-M-E.com slash upgrade20 and the promo code upgrade20. Our thanks to Delete Me for their support of this show and Relay FM. So it's big day in six colors land. It is the 2023 Apple report card. Is. For people that are new around here, Jason, what is the six colors report card? I ask a bunch of people um, who are mostly kind of uh, media or other people involved in discussing or the, uh, the Apple on the internet, basically. Uh, to score Apple in a bunch of categories from one to five about what Apple did in the previous year. It is a, a measurement of general sentiment. I always use the phrase, it's the, it's the vibe in the room. I think that anybody who's been following the conversation for the last year will not be surprised by the outcome because it is the people who have been having the conversation. So it shouldn't be like particularly shocking, but it's a way for us to measure it and can compare it to previous years, and then get a, a bunch of commentary from those people if they want to share commentary that goes in a very long post on my website. So uh, more than 25,000 words of commentary if people want to wade through it or they can skim it or they can ignore it, but also some numbers and some changes over time just to get a sense of sort of like what are people in this sphere thinking about Apple's performance in the last year. So what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to run through uh, each of the categories. We'll talk about the scores and their changes and then give our own 
scores. Like I, I mm. submitted my information to the report card. You, you included yes. me. But you do not vote. So I want to get vote. your votes today. Um, okay. I really recommend people go check out the scorecard because there's so many great quotes. Uh, and also one of my favorite things that's happening right now, which I'm sure you love too, is people posting their full report cards on their websites. Mm-hmm. That must be, I reckon, pretty good for sending traffic yeah. over to you. That, comes that's great. And I like, that, I like that they do that because they have lots to say and yeah. they want to they say it. And, and but you I, can't include And I trim everything. it down. So I trim down like uh, people send in like explanations of why it's a certain score. And I take out the like the details of like why they chose a number. I don't put in there. I'm right. not interested in that. And I, I will remove some things if it's redundant or if they didn't really have much to say. I try to slim it down at least a little bit. Um, and I'll also say if people are, are curious, each section is sometimes there are very funny placements where one person says something and they're immediately contradicted by somebody else. I find those hilarious. <laughs> Every section is randomized. So the sequence of the comments in the story per section is random. Mm. So I'm not the I'm not, you know, doing the thing where program. there's a moment in there where like everybody says how great Apple TV Plus is and then the next person's like, There's nothing on Apple TV Plus. <laughs> like, oh boy wow uh yeah but it, it's uh it, it's all there for people who want to spend a lot of time reading words about apple it's there so it's a score out of five five is the maximum yeah um, wonderful we'll start with the mac which got a 4.2 which was the same mm-hmm. year over year um, yep. i scored four for the mac I, and really just because i think that the mac is just continuing to be in a very good spot um the if you think about the hardware, in my opinion, it's like as best as it's been in the entire time I've been following Apple um, from capability and design and stuff like that. Like there are no glaring issues, I feel. I know that everybody has their own uh, issues, but if this is my score. Uh, I, I think it's really good. The only reason I wouldn't put it higher is you kind of got to reserve it for if there's something new, right? Uh, and that isn't this time. There's, we're just well, I mean, we're there's the Mac Pro one. that didn't do anything more than the Mac Studio. Yep, yep. Maybe so I should have given it a five because of the Mac Pro, but but I didn't. But I feel like yeah. where Apple is right now, I think they've cleared basically everything up, and they put themselves in a real good position for the continuing future of Apple Silicon. So it feels like a very easy four for me. Yeah, I agree. I think four is a good number. Uh, I don't think it was a perfect year, but they are doing so well with the Mac. It's riding so high. And I feel like I, I feel like the report card, a lot of people are very um, focused on what's new. Mm-hmm. And you'll see that with the iPad. Yeah, of course. And I get it on one level, but on another level, I feel like if the Mac lineup was not i mean the mac lineup we got two sets of macbook pros this year right like there's a lot going on in the mac and yet at the same time it was like there was not like a a, a sea change it was mostly just sort of updates um and that's fine because it's in a good place and so that it, that carries some weight too so i would say four is a good number the iphone's 4.1 up from a 3.9 um i also mm-hmm. gave it a four i think this is a very very solid iphone like the, the iphone revision we got this year especially the pro especially the Pro Max. Um, mm-hmm. I, I love the titanium. I love the 5X camera. USB-C has been a great addition. Um, but it, it's really just like a very solid refresh. There has been no nothing earth-shattering. So again, it's like I feel like this is as high as I could give a score for this iPhone, personally. I, I, I If you did, if I could have given it a 4.5, I would have given it a 4.5. Yeah, um, I don't let you do that. But That's the kind of that. talk that I just removed from the story. Yeah, right there. We're talking about the rating system, but you can't. Right you out. can't edit me. <laughs> I can't edit you. No, I can't. Jim, take that. Take that out. <laughs> um, the uh, yeah, yeah. Again, it's. Uh, I think four is probably what I would settle on to. Um, part of me thinks the iPhone is really quiet, but at the same time, the titanium details, as, fun, as funny as it is when I see the ads and they're like, ooh, titanium, I'm like, does it matter? But the fact is, I love how that thing feels. I don't use a case. Uh, every time I pick it up, I'm like, oh, s- you know, smooth, light, nice. It, like, it's, it's really a nice phone. The Pro Max with the big telephoto is huge. USB-C is good. Bringing Dynamic Island to all the phone models or all the mainstream phone models this year was great because I, I like the Dynamic Island as well. So um, four seems about right. Yep. Now we move to, I think, the, the category probably going to get the most attention. 
which is the iPad, which is a 2.4 down from a 3.0. That's a bad grade. I gave it a 1. Mm-hmm. And you didn't include my comment, probably because it's all about scores, but I'm going to read yep. my comment in its entirety because I feel this deeply. If there was a zero on this list, it's what I would have given. Zero new hardware, zero compelling OS features. They made some additions for iPhone parity and fixed some issues, introduced to 16. Feels like a pure maintenance year. I'm hoping to give this score a five for 2024. Mm. Like, I see I, it. So disappointed. You don't get a zero. The, the, iPad, I know. the iPad has just been a disappointment this year. Um, I And uh, honestly, I hope that it is was a disappointing year because 2024 is going to be amazing mm. and I'm going to so. choose that optimism, but I'm not going to ignore what, what 2023 was, which was bad for the iPad. I um I think I'm going to give this a three because while I am also frustrated at the, pr- the process of... Uh, <laughs> of iPad hardware being not uh, not updated. And of course the iPad Pro, the one that I use, its last update was not really much of an update either. So it's really been treading water for a very long time. Uh, at the same time, I think there are a bunch of really good iPads at, at good prices. <laughs> I think that the line is pretty good. If there was a an iPad line that could withstand a year without a fresh iPad, uh, you know, it's this one. It, it survived it. It's okay. You could still buy an iPad and, you know, they, they sold whatever, 7 billion of them, uh, dollars worth of them mm-hmm. last quarter. So, I mean, those people didn't get shafted. I think that was okay. The reason I, I give it three instead of two, honestly, is one, uh, they made appreciable stage manager improvements in iPad OS, which is something they, making improvements after you launch a feature is not something that uh, Apple always does. Sometimes they just let it lay there being bad for years, and they didn't do that. And two, I got to give them credit for finally shipping I, um, two pro apps on the iPad, Logic and Final Cut Pro. Um, and yeah. while that doesn't necessarily balance out some of the hardware sluggishness, um, I do want to give them credit for that because I've been complaining about that for years and years and years. And they shipped them and they are they did a creditable job at shipping them. So yeah. um, uh, for that, I'll, I'll, I'll take a three considered two, um, but I think go, I'll go with three. Yeah, I think you're being way more fan than I am. Like, I am frustrated. It's because for me, I agree with you on Stage Manager, but Stage Manager shouldn't have shipped originally. It was okay, bad, right? And so fixing it is great, but you put it to the bare minimum. Like, it's not like that they added the good things we wanted. They just got made it work. Properly. They made it usable, yeah. No, this is the this is the classic argument is do you give them credit for fixing the thing that they broke? Do you give them credit for finally shipping apps they should have shipped four years before? Um I'm gonna give them a little credit for it. I, but yeah, I, I, I should get give the, credit I get it. for the for the pro apps. And here's what the saying what you're saying, I would if I could, I would actually adjust to a two because I forgot about the pro apps. And that's my blind spot because I don't use them and they just don't, don't work for me. Yeah. So I forget that they exist. But it is an important thing that they did. I think I was too harsh. I was too harsh on the hardware thing, but it is something that's frustrated me because I do think that the iPad hardware line has gotten quite confusing and complicated. And at the moment, there isn't much of a justification for why you should buy, say, the Pro still. And so sure. I, I've gotten a bit yeah. frustrated about that over time. Um, and in a year when they haven't done anything, it kind of accentuated it for me. But I feel like you're right, that you were being more balanced and I was a bit more upset about it. The Apple Watch is a 3.4 down from a 4.2. Uh, I gave it a 4 because I got an Apple Watch Ultra this year. Uh-huh. And I think that's why it was a 4 last year because lots of people got an Apple Watch Ultra. And I absolutely love... The the Apple Watch Ultra has changed my relationship to the Apple Watch in a sense that I now enjoy my Apple Watch where I felt like I was starting to begrudgingly wear my Apple Watch because Mm. of the frustrations I found in it and also the fact that it looked the same way for a long time and that bugged me. And I really like the the Ultra. I'm I'm a big fan of it. And so uh, I'm happy that it exists now. I think this is one of those categories where... I personally don't agree with the panel focusing so much on what happened this year. I also would give the Apple Watch a four. 
I think the Apple Watch is in a good place. I don't really care that the Ultra 2, I mean, it was actually like a new chip. They hadn't done that in a while. I don't care that the pace of innovation is slow here because the Apple Watch has come a long way and they could always do more, but I think the Apple Watch is in a fine place. I think that updating the Ultra to the Ultra 2 is good. They didn't just let it sit at Ultra. They did improve the chip on that. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw a lot of comments that are things like, oh, that double tap feature is not very interesting. It's like, well, that's true. <laughs> I mean, that's true, but I'm not going to say, well, one, one out of five, because the new feature that they added wasn't very good. It's like, I think Apple Watch is in a pretty good place. I think the Ultra is a good addition to the, uh, to the line, and I like that they updated it. Um, the, is there more to be done in the Apple Watch? Sure, but it is, it's kind of the leader in smartwatches, and the watchOS, I know watchOS 12, uh, 10 was controversial. I find myself not using most of the features of it. I find that the, the changes they made... I don't really use those features, so it's kind of a wash for me. Um, I know people have opinions either way. I like I the widgets. A three. I like the widgets could, a yeah. lot. Yeah, I could have given this a three. I, 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 you know, I'll give it a four. But like again, I'm just really kind of reacting to the idea that uh, I don't think we need a brand new, fresh, amazing, totally different watch hardware every year for us to appreciate that the Apple Watch is in a pretty decent place. Wearables is at a 3.5 down from a 4.4. I think, like, mm-hmm. you know, as you've mentioned before, there's just no, there wasn't stuff, right? Like, there wasn't. The AirPods yeah. Pro 2 came last year, like in 2022, I think, um, which probably bumped That's that up. Year before last. Okay. It's it's those new it's those new features, the conversational awareness and adaptive transparency, which, you know, adaptive transparency is a really great feature. Yeah. Um, I gave it a four for those features. Conversational awareness and adaptive transparency, yeah. they take time, I think, to get used to. But if you commit to it for a bit, there's there's real benefit there. And, and I really like I really like the features. I think they're really good. I think I would say four here, too, and it's for the same reason, which is not a lot happened in this entire category, including the Apple Watch this year of, of like, of note. But it's a good category. Like Apple's products are good. I think Apple struggles with, you know, making new models and selling new models of things like AirPods in part because they are already really good. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so, I mean, I can't mark them down for that. Uh, I'm looking at this now. So we got 2022, the end of 2022 was the second generation. But then of course we got the USB-C, version but it yes does, just the minor USB-C with other somehow apple vision pro features in it that actually annoyed me <laughs> that, that yeah. annoyed me yeah. that i had to do that mm-hmm. um but i did i did do i did buy the second pair but i was frustrated about that apple tv is a three down from a 3.6 i gave it a two um for me the issue is i just the hardware of the apple tv i feel like is is leaving so many things on the table and they're just not doing anything with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I also think that similarly for tvOS, like there are improvements to tvOS, but I feel like with every improvement, Apple also finds a way to just buy a lot of the improvements to the TV app, I should say specifically, but every improvement to the TV app comes with another thing where they're just trying to make you look at Apple TV plus content. Right. So yeah. like, oh, here are yeah. these tabs. And by the way, now we're just going to put you on the TV plus tab a lot. Rather than your mm-hmm. home tab, it's like oh, okay, mm-hmm. but there are some features that are called like continuity camera and stuff like that, and that's hopefully building for something like we were talking about mentioned earlier in the draft, like a home pod of a screen or something like that. But I feel like Apple TV it just it kind of sits there not doing much, and over time it's just getting older and older and creakier as time goes on. So my primary entertainment portal is the apple tv Same. that's what i use i don't yep. have a dvr i don't have anything like that anymore it's all apps on apple tv and tv os um and so if i'm following my arguments from earlier and i, I think having tried over the years including you know uh, you know every so often i buy a an amazon thing or a roku thing and um i think apple's is the best I really do. I think it's the best. Yep. I think that having the good hardware that's expensive, that we complain about its price, but it also means that it's more responsive and functional in a lot of ways than the other hardware is. So under that, I should give it a higher score, but I'm also going to give it a two because I agree. I don't like the direction that Apple TV and TVOS is going in. I think they desperately need to reconceive um, the difference or, or eliminate the difference between the home screen and the TV app. I hate 
that they have taken a user hostile approach to content where they really have decided they want to get in your way with Apple TV content instead of your own up next queue. Um, I hate that they, you know, they share the blame, I think, in, uh, in uh, not being able to get Netflix on side. Yes. Um, they, you know, the, there's a bunch of stuff in the OS. I, I'll even ding them for the, their new feature. Um, support for video conferencing using continuity camera is great. There needs to be an accessory so I don't have to cart out my phone and put it on my TV every time I want to talk to somebody on Apple TV. There needs to be a continuity camera, camera <laughs> from someone. And Apple or a partner, and there's nothing, um, and I hate it. Uh, and they and they eliminated the port on the back of the Apple TV, which would be perfect to plug in a USB camera. So you can't use. The, uh, it's just it's very frustrating. So even when they give, they kind of take away. I just think it's a. Um, it is simultaneously the best one of these out there, and also not great and going in the wrong direction. It, there's promise, right? Like that. That's the that's the thing oh, yeah. that's frustrating because it's so good. There is promise, but the, the promise a lot of the time is unrealized in the Apple TV, mm-hmm. which is a shame. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it comes down to very similar things of the rules that Apple puts in place for for developers, as you say, like th- they do share in the Netflix thing. Just give Netflix what they want. Netflix is television Mm -hmm. they should be i want netflix content in the tv app because i because of apple and netflix not being able to work out i feel like i don't get enough value from my netflix subscription because i forget to look (laughs) agreed same absolutely the same very frustrating And, and and again also just the the insistence of pushing down my content in order for them to promote their own content and i pay for apple tv Mm plus and i'm aware that there's a tab but like the fact that they have these huge ads for things and then below it is the actual content of what i'm watching that i want to get to it's so frustrating Mm -hmm. and um I get what they're doing, but their 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 priorities are wrong. Their priorities are messed up. And I and I get the idea that well, we need to expose things to people who don't know what to watch. Okay, but I know what to watch. I know what I want to watch. And there's no way for me to say, show me what I want to watch because that's what I care about. I mean, it's just it's very frustrating. So it need, they need to. They are. It, I rely on it all the time. That's why I know all the flaws about it. I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna mark them down because I'm disappointed that they aren't doing a better job with the thing that I use every day. So I think two sides of the same coin these days. Services is mm-hmm. a three point three down from a three point eight. I gave it a three. Now this is interesting because you know basically my thing about services is Apple TV Plus. The content is the best for me around there like original I programming agree. i think apple has the best original programming right now like slow horses for all mankind shrinking three of my favorite shows last year mm-hmm. um, yep. absolutely fantastic last season of ted lasso yeah I'm, I'm, we're just finishing criminal records silo was really good like foundation was really good like there's so much there yeah absolutely but for me Outside of TV Plus, I just find it harder and harder to think and judge mm-hmm. the services. Like, mm-hmm. there's so many, and I don't really feel like I'm necessarily get. I don't feel like I'm getting good value, you know, yeah. from my Apple One bundle. Yeah. But I pay it and I use it, mm-hmm. but I, I don't really get the sense of like this is worth it for me. No, I don't use News Plus. I, I find the news app still very frustrating and full of sources that are terrible. And many many people commented in the report card about how you can block a source, but it's still there. It just shows it as there but blocked. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that's not what the mm. and and like news news and new, news should work better, and then News Plus should work even better. It should. It goes back to what I was saying about the TV app. It feels like I'm being told what to see. Yeah, and the co- the quality of the content is poor, and there's lots of crappy ads. I think they conceived the product wrong. I, I I think they they conceived the product in a way that required them to let publishers insert their garbage ads in it, and they've got a lot of really bad blogs that just rewrite other right. It's all the problems of the web co- with content, and instead of it being like a place where the good content lives, it's just the crappy content aggregated by Apple. Um, so News Plus isn't that great. Fitness Plus is good. I don't use it as much. Um, Lauren uses it a lot. Um, so, you know, and I think they do a good job with fitness. Um, 
the I wanted to make an iCloud complaint. I actually have started to use iCloud more. I started syncing desktop and documents because I've got more computers that I'm using in different contexts now. But like even there, like what I discovered is there were a bunch of utilities that I have that are like right click on a file. Like I do that a lot with services, right click on a file. And it turns out that um, a lot of Apple's Mac um, APIs differentiate between whether something is in the cloud or on your local system. Mm -hmm. So when I went from my desktop is on my local system to my desktop is an, a synced iCloud desktop, a bunch of stuff just stopped working. And that's on Apple because it's Apple who's providing the compatibility for iCloud. So even when I try to embrace iCloud, I, I get frustrated by it. So I don't know. I, I agree with you. I don't I, I don't really know how to judge this. TV Plus is a standout. Um, so three, but you know there are other places where I'm I'm just really disappointed. And and they raise the price of the bundles, which is a point. I, I sometimes I think I need to actually go back and decide is the Apple One bundle actually making still making sense for me or would I be better off dumping a bunch of the ancillary parts and could I save money by dumping them uh, next up is home kit and home automation which is a 2.8 up from 2.7 did you give a score for services by the way I think I said three okay. just because I don't know what to give it otherwise and that's how I feel about home kit and home automation I just give it a mm -hmm. three it's just like I don't have anything to say on this. Oh, uh, I do. Okay, go for it. Um, one. <laughs> I'm going to give it the lowest rating. Wow. Uh, the matter transition's been bad. Um, a bunch of my items still show up as, uh, like, they're ones that I've taken off the network that you can't get rid of. They're ones that suddenly just are, like, inactive or can't connect, and then they come back. There's a lot of instability. Um, there are positives. Um, I've been using HomeKit Secure Video for a couple of cameras. That's actually part of the uh, Apple One iCloud Plus kind of bundle that I get. I get some camera uh, connections, and that's been nice. But, like... I I am frustrated by HomeKit and home automation because things don't seem that the home app is bad. The home app needs a complete rethink. There are all these extra home apps that are in the app store that do stuff that the home app doesn't do with HomeKit, which is bananas. The automation isn't as good as it should be. Um, I just I I get, I I feel like this is an area where Apple said, "Oh no, we're going to be we're going to embrace the home." And then there's just nothing mm. happening there. Very frustrated by it. I think that they're doing this is one of those areas where it feels almost abandoned. And um I'm tired of being patient and saying, "Well, they're working on it and matters spinning up." It's like, "No. No, they um they've dropped the ball." I actually agree with you. <laughs> I have retroactively changed mine to a one too. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Come with me. Join join me. And we if we talk more in generally about their their home strategy, which is not quite the same, but it's close enough. What's their home strategy? They rev, you know revised the home pods, and they still have that Apple TV, which we complained about a little bit. Um, but w like there there is so much opportunity in the home category, and they've done almost nothing, and it's very frustrating. Hardware reliability. Is a 4.6 up from a 4.5. I gave it a 5. I'm very happy with the quality of the hardware from Apple in this past year. I have no no issues. Agreed. Five. And I feel like it's been a while since we've had like a a gate, like a get those keyboards out of there. And, yeah. And oh, well, there's always a gate. There's always a oh, when I, mean, I get a new one iPhone, I think my we can iPhone take runs hot a little bit. To okay. Be honest. Like yeah. like I, sure. you know. That that was a thing. Yes, people found that their phones were hot, but phones can always get hot, and they fixed it. And it like wasn't like an issue. Issue, I think. No. Uh, software quality is at a three point six up from a three point four. I gave it a four again. Like, I d I feel like it's we're not having these issues. There are things I don't like about the software, mm -hmm. but I don't feel like the software is broken. Yeah, I think I'm going to say three. Um, but I feel uh, similar to you. The idea that uh, what I like about Apple's software right now is that it, I don't feel like there's some horrible pain <laughs> that I'm going through somewhere. I yeah. don't feel like that. I, I do feel like Apple's software 
in general, including their apps and their operating systems, could really stand more attention on quality, attention on fixing bugs, attention on polish, and attention to existing software and features that have been left by the side of the road and could probably do with a little bit of a dusting off and updating. I feel like, and, and I understand why maybe they're not doing that right now because they just launched Vision Pro and all of that. But like, I feel like we, we talk about like doing a, um, a snow leopard year, a mountain lion year, like a lot about like maybe, maybe they could do that. And I think maybe they could do that for a long time. There are very, I mean, they're always going to add a thing here and there, but I, what I would really like inside of Apple is Apple providing a little more incentive to its developers to have a certain amount of time that they can spend just making everything that's already shipped better. Because I think the danger when you're Apple and you get in this shipping new features mode is you spend all your money on the new features, all your time on the new features, and you have a, your, your systems are littered with old new features. <laughs> that just sit there. And um, several people mentioned in the survey that uh, screen time is a good example. Screen time is a, a system feature that shipped broken and has essentially never been fixed. And it's broken. The, the numbers aren't reliable. Mm. People have just given up on it. Sometimes like, I get 24 hours a day for seven days a week because something got stuck in Safari. That's yeah. my favorite one. Yeah, and, and and I mean that's a that's maybe an outlier of an example, but it's a great example in the sense that that was a new feature they talked up, and it didn't really work right, and that's it. Like that's the end of the story, and that's why I feel like this isn't more about like a snow leopard year. I kind of want a snow leopard mentality in the software group. That I know they're going to have to push out forward new features, and I know they've got new operating systems, but I would really like it if the if they got a little less ambitious, honestly, with some of their features year to year and and cultivated a more of a culture of of rewarding people for glowing up existing stuff because a lot of this stuff is dusty and dingy and needs a glow up. Developer relations a three up from two point eight. I gave it a three. Uh, I and basically for me, this this is always one of my lowest scoring categories for reasons that I don't think listeners of the show will be surprised about. Um, and also this, I mean, this was just bear in mind this is the 2023 report card, right? So it doesn't include what we've been talking about in 2024, right? But I gave it a three this year, which I actually think is is one of the better scores I could give because I thought that WWDC was was really good. I think that they did the best they could of what they had i saw a lot of developers very happy enjoying themselves like and and i think that they did a during that time i think they did a good job to get developers excited for vision os and i think that the labs that they've done were very good too again like mm -hmm. very similar sentiment it seems from a lot of the community but there were also a lot of the developers that were frustrated about a lot of things in vision os like the dev kits that never materialized for many and right. stuff like that but i i do think that for where apple is right now in my opinion to score a three out of five for developer relations would suggest that 2023 was a pretty good year for them yeah, I'm going to say three as well. I'm tempted to say one because of, you know, everything. But the fact is, I think, and I know this is looking into 2024, which we're not technically allowed to do. Yep. Um, but you can see with the Vision Pro apps that, like, eh, there's still uh, enthusiasm for new Apple pr platforms out there. Maybe not from bigger players as quickly as the indies. But there's there's enthusiasm, and there are a lot of – I bought a lot of apps <laughs> on Vision Pro um, in the last two weeks. Um, the other thing I would say is – it's all about who the developer is. I think Apple's relationship with a lot of bigger developers is fraught because they're taking 30% because they have rules about how you have to format your logins and how you use the app store. And like, I get it. But I always come back to the fact that most of the, like we talk about the 30%, but the fact is most developers don't pay 30% anymore. They pay right. 15%. Because so most developers are in the, the, the program or they're on like a subscription or, or something. The second year of a subscription, either way, right? So so 
it's really the bigger developers who have more fraught relationships. And I know that there are complaints among indie developers and they need to do better documentation and that there are things about the, like there are always going to be issues. I feel like we're not in a situation where developers are all out there with, um, with torches and pitchforks right now. Mm -hmm. And when I, the reason this category exists is because when I started the report card, they were, (laughs) the the torches were lit when I started the report card. And um, I think that Apple has gotten better and that the deal is better and that they have mitigated a lot of it, even though there is all, I would say always going to be frustration with the way Apple treats developers. If, if Apple treated every developer like they treat, um, uh, like, uh, like, base camp and hey right if they treated them the same as they do epic well sure <laughs> it would be a one but there are also a lot of positive uh, stories about people doing good work and using swift and swift ui and yep. again could those be better sure um uh, so i'm gonna i'm gonna throw it in the middle i i think we we so often dwell on the negative but i do see a lot of positive too and so I'm, i think i just have to come up with a default three here I can feel like as well, developers, any developers in our circle, our community, it seems like by and large these days, they are disappointed at the things going on at wider scale, but their individual experience seems to be better. Seems to be okay. Yeah. You know, like I think about, let me, let's talk about our friend Casey Liss. We love talking Ah, about Casey. So Casey is frustrated about things like documentation and you know, maybe some of the stuff that happened with Vision. But at the same time, Core Sheet just got an Editor's Choice Award. So he is an individual developer is getting a nice experience, right? Like that is them paying attention to, to some of the quality apps that exist on the platform. So, or like I think about, you know, Underscore. Underscore, when we talk, he has glowingly positive things to say about like Apple and his experiences with them. Because he kind of does what they want, I think. And in doing that, he has a better experience than people who maybe want a different, who want something different. So I think that there are individual, like macro and micro uh, experiences that people have. And I think that the micro experiences are actually getting better over time, but you can't avoid the macro, which actually brings us on quite nicely to environmental, social, and societal impact. Yes. This scored a 3.8 this year, up from a 3.4. I think the reason it went up is the reason I gave it a 4, which was the carbon neutral stuff. I think this is a huge right. deal. Um, I think that this is what hey, Apple... Mother have, Nature. Several people pointed out that, nor- that you know, when Mother Nature is in your promo video, you're doing pretty you're good. You're doing pretty good. <laughs> Uh, and so, like, for me, the carbon neutral stuff was a big jump and, and the commitments they're making and actually shipping products today that are carbon neutral for their lifetime is very bold and, and I think is helping them mm-hmm. set a, a new path for what the kind of the tort should be. But I can't get to me today. It is too complicated <laughs> to give yeah. a full score to Apple because a company of this size I don't know if I can call them a good for the world anymore. Like, it's right. just too big. And they're doing too yeah. many things. And they're working on political stages, you know? Like, I yep. I just, I there's too much going on that I don't know about that I feel like I can say, like, oh, yeah, top marks, you know? Whatever issue you care about will also influence. The one you care about the most will influence yep. your feeling. Look, so when I started this... Um, I forget what there was some there was some it's it's changed every year there's some issue involving Apple and I think in the end it is the, it is the greatest Rorschach test it really is everybody's going to score it differently the reason it's so vague on one level is I just kind of want to get like Apple always says they want to they want to be uh, a force for positivity in the world right they want to leave the world better than they found it that's what they say and this category is sort of like oh, how are they doing how do you think they're doing and we can't we can't know and I think you're right. They're so huge; it's actually very hard. Um, I, I, um, I'll, I'll say, I'll say four, maybe three, but I'll say four. It doesn't matter. Um, and but, but what I wanted to say is, several people pointed this out, and I think that it is the best way to look at this on a broad scale, which is, Apple did the carbon neutral products thing. They had the Mother Nature video, which I thought was funny. Um, 
and it's very easy to point at them and say, yeah, but your carbon neutral has got a lot of offsets, which are just tree planting, which is just a rife with fraud. And not really like planting a tree where there was always already going to be a tree planted doesn't actually offset anything. And like, OK, I, I'm going to guess that Apple's tree planting is probably of a better quality than the than the lowest. But still, we can have that argument. And the Mother Nature thing, you can be like, come on, you know, uh, I don't like that. And I don't like what it says because they're really a big corporation. And I'll give you that, too. But what I will say is Apple's carbon neutral commitments are valuable if for no other reason than they put all of their other competitors and other companies in the in the world to shame mm -hmm. and it makes by having a couple company the size and visibility of apple make those carbon neutral commitments it makes every other corporation have to answer the question of what's their commitment and then you start to see commitments like i forget what the company is is it Honda? Somebody was like, we're going to be carbon neutral. Or no, it was an airline. American airline? It was like, we're going to be carbon neutral by 2050. And I'm like, 2050? And I don't believe them. But 2050? Like, I, I, so I think Apple deserves a lot of credit for trying in public to live up to its commitment and making the commitment. Um, there are lots of other issues here. You know, Apple's involvement in China um, depends on how you feel about China. Union busting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That that came up in the comments. The, their relationship with employees who are trying to unionize. We can talk about like their their work from home policy being rescinded. Like there are lot there are lots of things that we could talk about here. It's complicated, like you said. But I do think that they, at a uh, at some high level, are trying to do good in the world even though um, they are also, and we should never forget it, a publicly held profit-making corporation. That is what they are. They are not a charity to make the world a better place. Um, so I think in the context of being a publicly held profit-making giant corporation, I think that they're a force for positivity among their ilk, right? You've got to among adjust their your expectations accordingly, right? Like, mm -hmm. you can't... Yeah. Judge them as a nonprofit as you would a nonprofit. But it means, it means you there. can go to Google or Facebook yes. or, or or a car company or an airline and so say, why well, don't you this do is what this? Apple's doing. Samsung. What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Why, you know, why aren't you doing what Apple's doing? Yeah. Why and can't I'm sure you do those this? companies hate that Apple is oh, bringing yeah. this up because then they have to talk about it, right? And and that is, I, I think that is in Apple's credit, even though we should never forget they're not a charity. They're here to make a lot of money. Never forget that. But like, you know, for me, they get this boost from the carbon neutral thing this one time. Like, you've done it. Great. Now this is just what I expect from you. Yeah. And so next yeah. year, we go back. We reset the, deliver. the clock again. Mm -hmm. So that's the scorecard. There is so that's much it. good stuff in there. Um, there are, there's a good, Quinn Nelson makes a very good jab at me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I caught a stray from Quinn, so you can go check that yeah. one out. Uh, mm -hmm. over at sixcolors.com where you can get the report card. It's always a good time to sit down, cup of coffee, and sort of just scroll through and have a good time with uh, what people have got to say. This episode is brought to you by Ladder. Let's be real. If you're anything like me, you've got a tendency to put some things off until the very last minute. Whether that's going to the DMV, arranging a dental checkup, getting to a home improvement project, you know the kinds of things I'm talking about. While most of the time... It will just work itself out. There is something you cannot afford to wait on, and that is setting up term coverage life insurance. You may have seen commercials on TV and thought, I'll get to that later on, but you don't want to, lay up to wait on this. That's why you should choose life insurance through Ladder today because it's so simple. It's 100% digital, no doctors, no needles, no paperwork, when you apply for $3 million in coverage or less. You just answer some questions about your health in an application. Ladder's customers rate them 4.8 out of 5 stars on Trustpilot, and they made Forbes' best life insurance list in 2021. You just need a few minutes and a phone or a laptop to apply. Their smart algorithms work in real time, so you'll find out if you're instantly approved. There are no hidden fees. You can cancel at any time, and you'll get a full refund if you change your mind in the first 30 days. Ladder's policies are issued by insurers of long proven histories of paying claims. They're rated A and A plus by AM Best. And since life insurance costs more as you age, now's the time to cross it off your list. This is an important thing 
I recommend that you check it out. Go to ladderlife.com slash upgrade today to see if you're instantly approved. That's L-A-D-D-E-R life.com slash upgrade. One last time, ladderlife.com slash upgrade. Our thanks to Ladder for their support of this show and Relay FM. It is time for some Ask Upgrade questions. First question comes from Darren who asks... Are the Ask Upgrade lasers produced live each episode by Jason, or is it a recording clip? If it is live, he's very consistent. Live. Live Always every live. time. Live every time. Can you imagine if that was a clip? No. no. I mean, live. to They're be honest, that would be the, what, the logical thing to do, right? But no, why well, do, well, why we do a clip? We just get a laser sound effect and it would sound professional and that's not what we're here for. No, we're here for the live lasers <laughs> from Jason. <laughs> Chris says, you caught the Apple Vision Pro, an iPad on my face. When thinking about how to make a cheaper product in this category, what do you think about the possibility of an Apple Vision TV, a product focused on entertainment and not general computing? Here's my take on this. I've been thinking about okay. this question over the last couple of weeks. I think what this is getting to is the idea that this that would be a, a cheaper product, right? Because it was just more focused on entertainment. But I think the problem is a lot of the expensive product, the parts of this product, are the best for entertainment. High quality displays, high quality audio. Like I think these are some of the th- components that are the most expensive and difficult to make. And they are the ones, in my opinion, that are most needed for entertainment. I watched some of Avatar today, by the way. I just watched, I wanted yeah. to experience it. I think I like it, but it's weird, right? Like, it's, it's weird. a thing. It's, it is weird. Th- it looks like a video rate. game, is what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, it does. It looks like a video game. Yeah. It does. Because it's all animated and it's running at what, f- you know, to me feels like 60 frames per second. Yeah. Like, I know it's. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it might be 48. Yeah. But, yeah, but like, it's... it has that vibe of like, oh, there's mm-hmm. a lot of motion going on here. And yeah. Yeah. And it's in 3D. It looks fantastic. Yeah. Although, then I, sometimes there's a human child in the shot and you're like, wait a second, this isn't all. <laughs> what are you doing here, <laughs> human child? <laughs> How did you get in there? It's very strange. Um, yeah, I, I agree. The, the challenge here is that the the expense, the, the thing that makes this a good entertainment product now is the stuff that's expensive. And look, in the long run, I think we already see it with like the X-Real glasses that Federico bought that he's going to sell on eBay. Mm-hmm. Um, there are entertainment devices out there that are just like glasses you wear that have really nice screens in front of them. And I imagine that those products will continue to exist. I'm, I, I think if Apple finds that there's a niche that they can fill, they will try. But at this point, they need to make this product and it costs 3500 And I will also say, like, you can watch – there aren't stores and there, there need to be. But, like, on the Quest, you can watch a 3D movie. And it looks fine. It doesn't look great. It doesn't look like it does on the Vision Pro, but it looks fine. Um, uh, so I, I think that there are going to be – products like this that are focused more on uh, I mean entertainment includes games by the way but it also means things like watching movies and all of that but the challenge is that getting the services tied in Apple has the advantage of having its whole platform and app developers who have their own platforms like Disney that can bring them over um, so I don't know I, I, I think maybe in the long run if there's a niche that can be filled they will try to fill it but right now um, just like an iPad, right? An iPad can be an entertainment device, but it can also be all those other things. And it's not, you know, if somebody's just watching movies, they don't need to buy an iPad. They could buy just like an Amazon tablet and they'd be fine. Rob asks, if Apple is already offloading the battery to a separate device for the Vision Pro, would you trade some of the size or weight of the headset itself if they put some of the computing in an external pack? Or do you think they should shift some of that to the back strap to help balance the device? So my my belief is that one of the reasons the stuff is on the device is because they want the latency to be as low as possible. And the reason that they have the latency, which is very good, like uh, I think Quinn, Quinn, Quinn Nelson again has like a video of, of him like throwing stuff up in the air and catching it while he's wearing it. And somebody has a video, is it MKBHD? Somebody's got a video playing ping pong. Yeah, it's MKBHD. In, in the in the thing right and and like you got to have low latency to do that and and the speed of light is a limiter it's fast but it's a limiter and so if you've got all your chips right there right where the cameras are and right where the displays are i think you got to do that um 
I know that historically there was like remember that there was that rumor that like they wanted it to be like a box. So I I looked this up today. Beaming in when I was putting this together, there was something in my brain about this, and I found a Bloomberg report from June 2020. Hmm. So what four years basically ago, saying almost. Mike Rockwell's team originally worked on the idea of a what they called a stationary hub which in prototype form resembled a small Mac that would connect to the headset of a wireless signal. But Johnny Ive said that they should not do this and they needed to work on something that was more integrated. And I think, once again, Johnny was right. Because if you think about, like, people are complaining about the clarity of the Mac, this would have been just that everything streaming to the device. And I think if they would have done that, they would have had an Apple Watch 1 situation on their hands yep. where people would have yep. been universally unhappy with the quality of the product. Which I'd, I'd, Look, there are a lot of stories over the last week that apparently everyone in the world is returning their Vision Pro. Like, oh, I just feel like this is a story that's good to write right now. Like, I know people are returning oh, yeah. them, but come on. Yeah. Well, first off, people return Apple products after two weeks yes. a lot. Uh, and this was an expensive product that people wanted to try out but didn't yes. want to buy. I don't. I don't think it says anything about the product. I, what I would say is that look at the reviews of this product. I thought, Mike. I, I know this is a little bit of a sidebar, but every Vision Pro thing was so tightly controlled. You know, we got the, those demos. I got a second demo. People were getting the multiple demos, and I really thought, like, oh man, this is going to be a disaster. <laughs> what? It's going to be. Like, what are they hiding? Not, not yeah. necessarily a disaster, but like the reviews are going to be rough. They're going to be rough because Apple is hiding stuff from us. And when we actually get our hands on it, it's going to be like, uh, no, that they, they were, they were hiding all of these bad things about it. And the reviews honestly are vastly more positive than I thought they would be Yeah, because they, they talk about the potential and they, and then about how weird it is. And, all that is true, <laughs> but I really thought that they would be meaner and more negative and how this is a disaster and that didn't happen. So uh, I, I think uh, they're kind of validated about their decisions here. And um, and so, yeah, it, it's it's uh, it's it's uh, I, and I think they made the right decisions. Bottom that line, I think they made the right decisions to ship it. And um and uh, it, the reception has been better than I expected, and people are going to return it because it's a weird product and it's expensive. So some people want to try it and don't want to keep it. And I, I don't think that that's actually particularly notable. Um, I'll also note, and I'm not going to single anybody out here because there were multiple sources like this. Anytime you see a story that talks about something like people returning Vision Pro and refers to the people in it as the faithful or the fans, hmm, that tells you something about yeah. how that person views that story and yeah, the people like who are that. doing it. It is creating a narrative, uh, and like yeah, every time, every time it's fans or or faithful, um, it uh, I cry a little inside. <laughs> <laughs> and Scott asks, everyone keeps saying that the non-pro version of the Apple Vision Pro will presumably be called the Apple Vision. Take the pro away, and you're left with that name. But given how some reviews have emphasized the weight of the device, do you think it's possible that they'll call the cheaper and presumably lighter version Apple Vision Air? MacBooks have set a precedent for only having Air or Pro models. There's no MacBook without a modifier. Could Apple Vision follow that route? Totally. I love this. I hadn't thought of this mm -hmm. before. I think that this makes so much sense to me. I mentioned it earlier. I, I said Apple Vision Air earlier, and mm -hmm. one of the reasons actually was um, that I've gotten this, maybe even from Scott, this comment of like, well, what about Air? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's possible that they'll do that, that there won't be an adjective list, you know, that like an if Apple Vision and Apple Vision Pro, like an iPhone, that it might be Apple Vision Air and Apple Vision Pro, and the, it's like, imp it's lighter, and it has less stuff in it, and you know, you can wear it, and it, like, it's possible that they'll do that. Feels like the only product in recent memory that I can think of is the Apple Watch, right? Where they ended up, because at first they all had names, right? And then they've they, they've I, kind I, of standardized I, on that. Yeah, it, it is possible that the what this will ultimately be in, be called is that there'll be an Apple Vision Pro Two, mm -hmm. or Apple Vision Two Pro, and then there'll be an Apple Vision Three and an Apple Vision Three Pro, like the iPhone. That's another way they could go. But yeah. I like the idea of having it just be Air. That's that's not bad. Studio. <laughs> Go Studio. Go to Apple, Apple Vision oh, man. Studio. Let's do it. Let's bring it back. It's big. Apple Vision Studio. 
put it in there. 100 weeks. We'll find out. If you would like to send in a question of your own for a future episode, just go to UpgradeFeedback.com. You can send in your Ask Upgrade questions, your Snell Talk questions, your feedback, and your follow-up. You can check out Jason's work at SixColors.com, where you should look at the, the report card. Actually, before I continue, this is episode 500. Uh, I would 100. like to thank everybody for listening to yes. this show. For as long as you have listened, uh, this show is a joy to do. I will speak for myself. <laughs> I agree. Uh, but it is a absolute professional achievement of mine. I think Upgrade has made me better at all of my work, and it has uh, afforded me some incredible experiences, things that I'd always wished could happen. Um, and so I'm thankful for this show. I'm thankful for the audience. I'm thankful for you, Jason, and everybody that works on oh. this show now, which there is a, just a, a growing just team, team of people from our Thanks audio team. editor, Jim, to our video editor, Chip, to our social media <laughs> manager, Jamie, and mm -hmm. everyone else in between. Um, I, I absolutely love doing this show. It is a, a professional right. and personal honor. So thank you. Same. Thank you to all for listening. You don't have to listen to all 500. Don't let John Syracuse bully you into it. But no, thank you for being here like. for as many as you wanted. But if you jump on whenever you like, maybe you won't underst well, understand why there's lasers. And honestly, at this point, I don't know either. But that's know. kind hey, of the joy oh, of <laughs> those know. days. But now we got rid of verticals. We just have loads of chapters. <laughs> <laughs> yep, uh, by the way, true. Rumor Roundup will return at some point. Will return. I was going to do it this week, but then you published a scorecard. I was like, oh, well, yeah. Rumor Roundup will return. It. Yeah. It's like James Bond, you know, like at the end of a book. Uh, it is. It is. Uh, if you want to find video versions of this show, we publish a full video version to YouTube. We are at Upgrade Relay on YouTube. We're also at Upgrade Relay on TikTok and Instagram, where you can find video clips of the show, which are very fun. You can... Uh, fun. You can find some good stuff there, too, to engage with the show afterwards. Sometimes there are things posted on there that are not actually in the episode, not little the bonuses. It's, it's true. Last week, there was a whole, like, uh, you threatened to do a thing, and then later you did the thing, and yep. the whole thing is in there. It's yep. hilarious. So you can go find that over on our, our social pages. Uh, Jason is on Mastodon. He's Jason L. I'm uh, I Mike on uh, Mastodon, too, and on Threads. Same names. Thank you to our members who support us at Upgrade Plus. We appreciate yes, you. Yes even a little bit more because you help support the show. Go to getupgradeplus.com. Today we're going to talk about the additional things on our lists that we didn't pick for the draft, the episode 600 draft. Mm -hmm. Thank you to Ladder and Delete Me and Vitally for their support of this week's episode. But most of all, thank you for listening. We'll be back next week. Until then, say goodbye, Jason Snow. Goodbye, everybody, and most especially goodbye, everybody.